Hello, this is Daniel and welcome to a quick video about uh, some tips and tricks for retopology. Um, I've been a bit busy recently, so I haven't been able to produce too many videos, but um, I was working on a little project uh, here right now and while I was at it, I just wanted to share some of the techniques that I use to retopologize a sculpt such as this one. So I think recently uh, it has become more common to work with rather high resolution um, meshes. So in this case also I want to capture a lot of details in my retopologized mesh. Um, and so with the increased uh, number of vertices it becomes quite difficult to manage uh, all your points. Um, of course, as as you might know, with uh, good topology, your lines are your lines are supposed to be as smooth as possible. You want to uh, limit the number of poles, such as this one. I personally really like to line up poles as well as far as possible, uh, just to keep it really clean. Um, things like this here. Um, furthermore, you know, you might want to control the density, have more resolution in important areas such as the eyes and have less in flat and straight areas uh, such as here. But um, it can be quite difficult to do that because if you go and select every single point and position it by hand, um, you know, it, it becomes almost impossible and I guess um, people are not really accurate enough with, with the mouse only. so. Uh, yeah, if you look from a really steep angle, you wouldn't get so perfectly smooth lines. You know, you might get something like this. But um, to to achieve this kind of quality, and and this is um, yeah, still still work in progress, by the way. I'm still not quite happy with the with the flow here, for example. Uh, but here I have some cases that you know I I want to show you how I go about fixing them. So um, in this case, uh, let's see. Um, so let's let's look at this situation for example. You can see that this loop here is kind of a bit more complicated than it needs to be, uh, in my opinion anyways. I want to straighten this out a little bit and just smoothen this area generally. One of the simplest tricks that I often do is to just select an area uh, and to use the smooth, smooth tool and just, you know, smooth it out quite a bit. And of course, uh, you will go off the surface by doing that. So with with the with the snapping tools enabled again, snap onto the surface. Uh, make sure to project individual elements. You just move it a little bit and you reapply it. So you can see compared to before, I think that's a lot better already. Uh, it gives us a nice smooth flow here. And that's a very simple trick that I use a lot. Um, Another thing that I do is, in this case, this this long line here, it used to be uh, somewhere here, but I wasn't happy with the flow going so so steeply upward, so I was thinking I wanted to straighten it out a little bit. So what I do here is I first uh, just, um, well, let me show you this first of all. Uh, there is something called the loop tools. It's an add-on that I uh, like to use. You can see it here. You just enable that, it should be together with Blender, you don't need to download anything, if I remember correctly. Um, you use that and it allows you to do a bunch of things. First of all, uh, in this case what I used for example was the, the flatten tool, which flattens this line. Um, of course it will not be snapped to the surface anymore, but you can quickly fix that. And then I rotated it down and you know, just positioned it where I needed it to be. But you're now left with this entire upper part that doesn't really, um, that's not really aligned with the rest. So how should we go about this? Well, there's again many ways to do this, uh, but I'll show you another one that I like to use. So for this, I will quickly um, actually separate part of this mesh. Uh, let me make a quick selection here. Um, let's see how far I want to go. With control click, you can actually draw a line from um, the active point to, you know, wherever you click. Uh, I'll quickly use that to fill this selection up. And I'll separate that part of the mesh, uh, just because I only want to work on this. And I will use a modifier, uh, which is the uh, shrink warp modifier here. Um, I will go ahead and actually apply the mirror, uh, because that will help me 
with the with the line in the middle and of course we want to project it to our sculpt and with that all done I will just deselect the borders quickly and um, use again the smooth smooth tool and um, if this modifier wasn't there we would of course lose our volume like this uh, let's set this to one and do more iterations but with this enabled you can see it's projected back onto the surface in a very smooth way of course you get some distortion and that is why uh, what you want to do is um, basically duplicate it a couple of times you just apply it and you smooth it a little bit more and uh, just make sure you don't go beyond one which is a little bit annoying here but um, yeah and with that you apply it again and that's yet another way how you can easily smooth out an entire large area um, and get rid of a bunch of artifacts. Of course to merge that back together you have to um, delete a half again and merge it together with the original and the way you can do that is by selecting um, <coughs> selecting the, the two edges uh, I should have selected everything now and then you, you use the bridge um, I'm just using the search here to bring it up uh, apparently you can use control E for that so I use bridge edge loops here and I activate merge so then these will be together again you might have to recalculate the normals make sure those are outside uh, but yeah so here we have another artifact removed of course here in the transition area you might have a little bit of uh, a few issues that you that you might want to get rid of but I used the previous technique again uh, just you know select an area smooth it out a little bit and and resnap it to the surface and uh, right now you can see I, I did this very boxy thing for the ear but that's just a temporary thing I wanted to just be sure that this is uh, sort of clean all edges I'll probably go in and smoothen these out uh, these edges out a little bit later uh, but just for the moment just so that I can be um, very clean with what I'm doing this is sort of my approach at the moment but yeah just ignore this part for now maybe uh, more importantly I want to show you a few more tools that I use from this uh, loop tools set here, kit here um, one of them being the spacing and to relax uh, which are really handy because sometimes uh, let's say you, you're working on a neck actually let's try this here uh, I'll stretch this to the back and I'll just make some loop cuts and apply this all to the surface. Uh, sometimes you will get some um, yeah, uneven spacing like here I did this and you can see how this is wide and these here are short but you want them to be as even as possible. So what you can do here is you select all these um, loops it's a bit difficult to make the selection right but then if you just have these loops and you press space it will um, ensure that the space between each point on this curve is the same and so you get a very nice result you can do the same thing for uh, in the other direction because here we also have uneven lines and you see it's all now very even if that's what you want of course in my case I would I would want a bit more here and of course it doesn't line up right now but this is something that becomes very useful. You can also use the relax tool here to just get something a little bit smoother. And then you always have to make sure to just resnap it to the surface. But this is another trick for you to get really um, good results. Oh, and yeah, one, one place where I use that particularly often is, uh, let's say here you created this nice surface and it's all good, but then you want to connect it with the next part and you realize, oh, uh, yeah you're missing a few loop cuts here so we saw just that we have to add two more loop cuts into this mix and wherever you add it you know you're going to get more density here and you know no matter how much you try to space it out evenly it's not going to be accurate and you know as perfect as you want it to be so what I do is I use a uh, control click again to sort of select these parts or or shift click to select the entire loop and just press space and it's all nicely spaced out now and uh, we're good to go. So here of course I haven't yet uh, thought about the structure but we can do this later. But as you can see that gave us the desired result of um, a matched number of 
loop cuts and here I should be able with uh, eight cuts to match this part and yeah so this is of course really messy again but you know uh, from the with a couple of strategies that we learned before it's just a matter of uh, yeah smoothing things out uh, let's see what we can do here we could use just normal smoothing yeah as always I hope there could be a limiter to this number I never wanted to go beyond one but what can you do um, and yeah of course this is not perfect but I think you get the idea you I, I still have to think more about um, what direction I want the flow to go so right now I made this very straight but I'm still not sure if that's the best approach I have to think about this situation for example because if I wanted that to be the case then maybe I should keep this one here and um, try to stretch this part a little bit more to the back and maybe push these lines a bit more here so that this flow can be smoother into this direction uh, one thing we could try to do for this region is to uh, smooth it but limit it to um, you'll see what I mean in a second so if we smooth it oh, without this it will go up but we could say not to smooth it along the Z axis and then we could get some good results um, oh I suppose I have to do that every time which is a bit annoying but yeah something like this and you know here I see the, the spacing is again not very not the best so I can again try the other trick that I showed you before um, maybe I should exclude this part for now I can use the spacing and you see how how nicely the space now this also tells me that I have a bit more thinking to do up here but you know it's always a lot of back and forth um, I mainly wanted to show you the tools and how these are really useful when doing topo uh, retopology with very high resolution and if you use it uh, s smartly then yeah you can get pretty good results like here in the front I'm mostly done with with these areas so I'm just hoping to get the same quality throughout the rest of the head. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video. Um, I think it's some some very good, uh, some very interesting techniques that you might not easily find uh, online. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, uh, I hope to get back to you with some some more tips and tricks soon. But we'll see. Um, <laughs> Alright, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again soon.